Thank you to Digital Extremes, and specifically Warframe, for sponsoring this video. More on them in a bit. Ah, uh, Borderlands 2. A beautiful game, full of nostalgia, loads of different play styles, and... No. No. No! So in the interest of locking away some painful memories, I'm going to be phasing those out in favor of some new ones. First and foremost, I'm not sure what, but something tells me that I'm going to need to unlock phase lock before I'm able to proceed in a phase lock only run. Call it a hunch. This of course means I'll need to reach level 5 to get a skill point to spend on my action skill. Doing so without the ability to hurt things at all is of course something I'm no stranger to at this point. For the three people that haven't heard me go through this several times already, I start by fast traveling to Destruct Peak, open a door that's so dangerous that I'm shot straight to level 3 before then getting an objective that requires killing hordes of enemies that are all around level 36. Under normal circumstances that would basically be impossible, and really, I'm not completing most of it, but I am baiting them into doing themselves in. It's mostly running from point A to B with some careful placement for good measure. As long as you get lucky enough with spawns to not get a spitter. Which won't normally jump. I'm at least fairly sure this is considerably faster than the fight for Sanctuary XP farm. And before you know it, I have phase lock up and ready to go, allowing me to... It doesn't deal damage. Which is where we get into the fun side of things, oh those of you who didn't read the description. Phase lock only deals damage to certain enemies. Unless, of course, it's augmented with one of three abilities. The earliest one I can pick up being Helios, so back I go. <sighs> Wait! Eh. Aren't you tired of grinding being boring? Well, yes, but what the hell are you doing in my garage, disembodied voice that sounds suspiciously like me? I'm here to tell you how the grind can be fun again with today's sponsor, Warframe. Wait, why should I care about Warframe? And why did you break into my house to tell me? Because you personally have over 2,000 hours of playtime in the game. Wouldn't that make me a terrible person to tell given that I've already given the devs my mind, body, and soul? <laughs> Not so disembodied now, am I? Now shut up and let me do the ad read or I'll- So, Warframe. This game has literally thousands of hours to grind through. Ask me how I know, and if you enjoy that constant feeling of progress while working your way through a huge arsenal of weapons, companions, and what essentially boil down to playable classes to unlock and use, then this game is absolutely built for you. And all jokes aside, I genuinely love this game. I love the grind. I'm not going to tell you that it's perfect, because nothing is. I am going to tell you that when I was asked to talk about the new update, Whispers in the Wall, I was intrigued to say the least. For those unfamiliar, the story is expanding, and despite all odds, the narrative of this game is weirdly good. I'm looking forward to see where this update takes us. For old players interested in coming back, there's some more Man in the Wall content coming, which is my favorite story beat thus far. For the lore nerds, there's going to be more on Albrecht and Trotty, but me, I'm looking for that kind of creepy that only a hey kiddo can give. If you don't know what that means now, you will eventually. In addition, we're looking at new enemies, one that has more hands than sense, a new Warframe that's looking a bit angy, but you probably would too if you're made of irradiated concrete. But if you're anything like me, you're a nerd, so let me ask you this. Do you want to fight hordes of enemies with nothing but a book? Because if you just answered no, then why are you lying to yourself? I can't wait to get my hands on this thing as a brand new weapon type. If you haven't before and you're interested in trying what is legitimately one of my favorite games, you can register for free using my signup link in the description or pinned comment. It's playable on basically everything, be it PC, PlayStation, Xbox, or Switch. It doesn't really matter. With crossplay and the coming cross save, you can play online with almost any one of the there are over 75 million registered accounts. Hot dang. Well, I will continue to be one of them, and DE, if you're listening, how would I go about shamelessly begging for an XCal Prime? My arsenal is feeling his absence. Anyway, how goes the grinding, Spud? Yeah, you should probably get back to Borderlands, Bud. The update is already out, and I'm gonna go play it. Oh, where am I? Oh, clearing out my first enemies. I guess I shouldn't be surprised that they're dying so easily with a level difference. I am a little worried by the fact that Knuckle Dragger is taking so little damage. I mean, there are 10 levels between us and I had to use the safety crate. And I mean, I probably didn't have to, but cheesing this game is basically my default means of interacting with it at this point. Afterwards, I watched a couple of amateurs fail to fiddle with a lock for a while before eventually getting the door open. Finally into Hammerlock's town, and as you can imagine, this sort of gameplay is far from thrilling, so I was doing what I could to group enemies into one fiery AoE. And within the immediate area, I did have some outside help from the local wildlife. All in all, this whole section would prove pretty comfortable. It was made even easier when folks were standing unfortunately close to barrels that they shouldn't be. 
But really, this whole thing was starting to put me to sleep. It had nothing to do with a lack of sleep that you can prove in a court of law. So I started on things the following day by answering a question for which I hadn't an answer. How was this quote-unquote build gonna deal with shield and enemies? And that's the neat part. I wouldn't. At least, not really. The majority of them just get back too quickly for me to do anything. But just as I was about to give up on the encounter, I managed to accidentally set off a barrel. All is not lost just yet. Still with a level gap of around 5, I was able to slowly brute force my way through the remaining foes who were too foolish or poor to get their hands on shields and make my way to Boom Boom. And Big Bertha is a great example of why basic mobs are harder than bosses. For the one person that doesn't know, Phase Walk is meant to hold enemies in place. For enemies that can't be held, it instead just does a bunch of damage instead. It doesn't cool down while active to my knowledge, so having it behave normally is almost exclusively a downside for the purpose of this run. And I know there are already a few ways to cheese this boss. It's not even a hard boss, but did I just find another spot to cheese this encounter? It's just a bit out of the way, but this seems like a super safe place to stay for a bit. Have a snack, toss out some damage every now and then. Anyway, standard affair. Shoot the gate without hitting anybody, run as fast as I can through a series of encounters that I will have no part of, all to get to multiple shield enemies and barrels are a limited commodity, so back I go. Turns out, even just one more level is enough to deal health damage, and once I know health damage is possible, it's all over. Or it would be if the first real boss of the game, which is still technically a mini boss, wasn't absolutely unfair. He's a bit tanky, luckily very cheesable, but he also heals from any inflicted fire damage while he's in his fire mode. I currently only deal fire damage, and when he's in his normal mode, he's incredibly resistant. He also sometimes heals when he's not burning, so I'll have to farm some more levels because I was legitimately doing less damage than the starter pistol, and I was doing it even slower. When I came back, I was sure that being twice his level would be enough to carry me through, little by little, waiting on 13 seconds of cooldown between every attack. I knew that I could do it. But I also knew that it sucked. So I came back with Converge, which deals physical damage instead. It pulls enemies together, and I'm pretty sure in a wider AoE, but it does less damage to most enemies. While he takes reduced bullet damage in his fire mode, Converge knows no such weakness. It also not healing him ever means that it was only a matter of time until Flint would fall, and me only around halfway to the typical level cap for a normal playthrough. This bodes well. The funniest part about this whole situation, at least to me, is that Converge is in an entirely different skill tree, so when there was a shielded enemy, I had to go all the way back to Liarsburg to respec to be able to kill the basic mobs in Flint's arena. I downloaded a car just to prove the PSA is wrong, for legal reasons that's a joke, and I left to enter a contractual obligation with the Crimson Raiders because being locked into those isn't even mildly scary. <laughs> uh. I tried enlisting some bully mongs for assistance, but found them to be traitorous at their core. The bastards. Making friends with the bandits. Well, I'll show them. I'll show them all. Burn. 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 I, I, I mean, uh, yay. I avenged Richard. And there were no other motivations within the last few minutes, I'm, I'm sure. I did the usual routine maintenance around Sanctuary that absolutely shouldn't be trusted to the first person to walk in. If Jack's whole plan hinged on me gaining their trust and whatnot, why not just hire someone to waltz in under the same circumstances except on his payroll? Anyway, I'm not even being paid by the Raiders, so logic would dictate that I'm not being paid to stand around fighting these guys, so instead you can absolutely rely on me not doing that. Out of my way, I've got places to be. Like here with Lilith. I'm used to more or less leaving things to her, but the ludicrous range of my action skill means I don't have to choose between comfortable and capable. This was about as hard as shooting the fish in a barrel, and I don't even have to hold the gun. She's asking me to find our fearless leader. Maybe had he a few more fears, I wouldn't have to rescue him, but mine is not to think. I'm simply here to lock. Speaking of, I've got to get through a door without one, and to do that, I'm going to need a car-shaped key. Well, if my weapon of choice is said lock, then someone must have called a lawyer because you can consider mine picked. The bandit cars are entirely immune to phase lock. My immediate thought was to use the surrounding enemies to hit the cars with the AoE from Helios, but it would pretty much guarantee the death of the enemy it was used on, as well as several others, but barely touch the car I needed to destroy. And try as I might, I just couldn't get the spider ants to do enough damage to break them on their own. The enemy cars would just leave, fall out of bounds, kill all the wildlife, or the spider ants would just sit and watch as their health would deplete, doing nothing to help my ongoing effort. To make matters better, I have nothing specked into any real survivability, so dying was a major risk, and success was... not. There was no risk of that. 
So it genuinely has been a bit since I last played, and I'd like to think I'm at least somewhat knowledgeable regarding some of the weirder sides of Borderlands 2. Despite what you might think though, I am far from a confident individual. Quite the contrary, I doubt myself constantly. It got so bad that following the idea of if you can't beat them, join them, I briefly signed up to work alongside them. I thought things were going alright, despite me bleeding on their hardware, but they got spooked when they heard about the potential lawsuits if I didn't uphold my obligations, and I was let go. The self-doubt was so bad that I managed to gaslight myself into believing that I couldn't destroy the cars by carefully placing myself behind them for cover and letting the spider ants do it, which is exactly how I did this. Five times over. I didn't deal any damage to them, meaning all of the levels I grinded out along the way were more or less pointless. It mostly just involves reloading the area until you get a car to play nice paired with spider ants that can survive long enough, or in other words, RNG. It's pure luck throughout, and I wouldn't recommend it if it can be avoided. Luckily, the car was a perfect fit for the lock. Not sure how I would have emotionally recovered if it wasn't. And also, bad ma is easy to cheese in a variety of ways. My personal method of choice is just to peek around cover that they can't flank in any meaningful way. Is it brave? No. Is it effective? Absolutely. And I find that it tends to be rather hard to argue with results. Inside the bloodshot stronghold where I would find our fearless leader, though, was a different story. It was mostly me bouncing around burning people alive. I said it was different, I didn't say it was that different. I think I've proven on this channel that this place can be made hellish for any level of character if you're dedicated enough. This though was not that, it was pretty reasonably comfortable. Bazelock was dealing about as much damage as a sniper rifle if you're bad at aiming, but the speed and ease I could use it and retreat to cover made things really safe as long as I was patient. It was this patience that would carry me forward. I didn't even die in this room once. I'm far better than that. I died twice. The bull room requires a lot of kills though, and the forced slow nature of it meant I was heavily incentivized to stay back, and for the first time in a long time, this place was genuinely really easy. And after the fact, I found our fearless leader who was so fearless that he slept through his kidnapping and tried to nap through the second one. The second group seemed offended by this and woke him with a rousing game of giant death robots. The following always boils down to a different game called Dodge Bullet, followed by Fighting the Warden. And wouldn't you know it, its shield recovers just fast enough for me to do absolutely no damage to its health. I knew that it was immune to slag, but I didn't know that it's immune to fire damage over time effects. Or at least it is as far as I can tell. So you know what that means! So with just a touch more damage, Helios was able to break the Warden's shield. Only just, but that's enough for me. It also does a number on the surrounding loaders, which is a nice feature. But the ability to deal health damage is, once again, all that I needed to feel as though not all of my efforts were in vain. And, uh, I swear there was a badass loader here just a moment ago. I don't think I remember ever seeing them just despawn like that, and I'm at least fairly confident I didn't deal enough damage for it to break like they normally would. They have a ton of resistance to fire damage, so what gives? Anyways, back to Sanctuary I went, when another meeting that could have been an email sent me to another location where I have to supply explosive devices to a 13 year old. Yeah, that doesn't sound legal or ethical, and I'm fairly sure I can't be bound by a contract that requires I break the law. Oh, there are no laws here, meaning all contracts are meaningless, so I, I can leave? Oh, right. They have guns. Yeah, okay. This is fine. So I tricked some animals into burning themselves alive, stole some explosives for a small child so she could blow up a train to which we legitimately had no idea of the contents. Mordecai's intel is terrible. That could have been a passenger train for all we know, and I'm not saying Jack was right about the whole bandit thing, but he does kind of have a point. These people are scary. I caught a train with my face because Maya is terrifyingly strong, and luckily the only humanoid passenger that I discovered was Wilhelm. Turns out he'd been horribly poisoned anyway. At least, maybe. Depends on the canon you follow. And things were off to a great start, but it was starting to look dangerously like effort was involved and knowledge is power. And I, like many who have achieved such things before me, will use my power to instead be lazy. For those that aren't familiar with the spot, Wilhelm can't really do much of anything to you here, so... Eh. Also, if he's in the middle of recovering his shields when you hit him, sometimes he'll just stop recovering his shields and his surveyors will do absolutely nothing as long as they stay stuck with him. And they were staying up out of the range of Helios, so they didn't get broken for a majority of the fight. You really don't need to try to break this game. It just happens. They did come back down and get busted, meaning he started at least sort of trying again, but it was far too late. 
It was far too late, Wilhelm. Despite my best efforts though, I was unable to make my way back onto the main platform, so I suspect that I had a speed buffer or something on Salvador that I don't remember. I couldn't really find a better alternative, so it's into the void, no me girls and me boys, from this ledge's hands I'll fall. We'll be responding for fun, grabbing the core, then done. Then me corpse will be left in the cold below. Also, in case enough fear hasn't been instilled in you regarding enemies and the weird hybrids that the game has to offer, have you considered that not only can loaders be vault hunters, but they can activate the buck up glitch and gain ridiculously fast and infinite shield regeneration. Which is terrifying. I have no idea what caused this. Back I went to definitely not make things worse for everyone involved, witness Lieutenant Davis perish for quite possibly the first time in person, because despite having played this game for literal years, my first memory of his death comes from watching somebody else play the game within this year. I am not observant. For the crime of glorifying phase locking over the far inferior phase walking, Lilith kicked me out and left with the whole city of Sanctuary. It looks to me like she's helping to hold the city up though. Suspiciously like the cooler power, Lil. Kinda hypocritical of you there. But to uphold my end of things, I've got to catch up with them regardless of my surrounding circumstances, which proved easy at first, then it got a little scarier, mildly harder, then it got easier and harder. Enemies were showing up really quickly, and so I repaired the beacon a lot, and then just kind of sat in a house for a really long spell of doing nothing. I threw out a few locks here and there, but I'm fairly sure the majority of the enemies that spawned in just kind of stayed while I bailed out of there. Because, nah. Meeting back up with quite possibly the least competent resistance since the last game I played, I left to the Wildlife Exploitation Preserve to get the team mascot back after it was stolen by a rival group. Or whatever team building things people do, I don't know. Nobody ever asks me to be on teams. While it may come as a surprise, Helios is legitimately one of the best methods of wounding but not damaging the loaders I've used in a long time. As lethal damage is too far and knocking off limbs is entirely unnecessary. The animals within the area that aren't what wing go down easily to fire damage, upon getting to the infamous door, I had a bit of trouble choosing between the two groups to side with. On the one side, there are regenerating shields. On the other, bull loaders are basically immune to my fire damage. Do you know what isn't? Super badass loaders. Standard badass loaders are, and I don't understand. With no effective means of health regeneration, enemies taking a ludicrous amount of casts to kill, and the super badass loader just despawning. Yeah, nah. Thanks. Not particularly interested. Are you playing without me? Uh, no. Shut up. Get back to work? Eh. I'm telling Alex. No! Fine, I'm back. Now I have Converge and Helio, so I can do a bit to everything. Works for me, at least well enough. Finally able to deal with all the possible spawns, I was able to pretty comfortably take cover without being flanked from all sides. Real nice, that. If only I had an ounce of survivability. Running through the rest wasn't all that bad. Oh, the skag door? What about the skag door? They grew up and have flesh. They were about as difficult as pressing a button. But they were far from the last hurdle. Literally, it was quite the walk, and my feet are tired. Bloodwing, though, is renowned for causing a myriad of troubles. She's fast, hard to avoid, and comes in a load of different flavors of pain. And while she has arguably the most literally painful method of which to cheese her, it's also the most effective. Because the game was built on nothing but hoping for the best and an expired half-eaten can of soup, jumping repeatedly removes her ability to do anything even remotely approaching effective. And I can't phase lock her, meaning I do absolutely monstrous amounts of damage. This was not just easy. This was incredibly easy. This was approaching negative levels of effort. I think it may have been harder to use a gun. Morty, your bird friend is kinda weak. And very dead. Oops. I ran home to fulfill the job of a postal service and basically any messaging system in the known universe. After delivering an object, I showed up to Bricks to kill his men to recruit him. Of all the challenges to prove my worth to join a gang of bandits in all the world, I'm put into a tiny room full of mostly fleshy enemies, and I can't express how absolutely suited I am to these circumstances. One could argue that this is more or less hand-built to show off my one and only strong suit, because the cover here is also describable as ample. I was concerned a bit at first that I wouldn't be able to knock the helmets off of the goliaths, thus making this mildly more difficult, but that proved to be such a non-issue that in every way, I genuinely couldn't care much less. I think trying to not kill the Goliaths via the AoEs very well may have slowed things down, and if it didn't, it absolutely would have served to make things less fun. After initiation, I did my best to lock Brick into place. 
This went on for far longer than it should have before I internalized that slowing him down only prolonged what is already a sequence that drags on for far too much time. I provided him with a reasonable amount of assistance, aside from all the times that I didn't, and instead lifted an enemy outside of the poor bloke's reach. And don't worry, I'm helping. No, no really, I'm sure this is helping somehow. Is it moral support exclusively? Probably. Most likely, even, but it's the best that I can do. I came back wounded and tired, but frankly, I needed results, so I headed right back out to steal credit for somebody else's work. If I can pose as Jack, maybe it'll fool my coworkers into giving me praise for once instead of berating me. I tried to get him to hold still, but after two... Wait, seriously, two? I'm pretty sure that bastard gave me over an hour of trouble before, and he died in two casts. Are you serious? And I died to a basic mob. Of course. Of course I did. Why not? Just give me his files so I can move on with my life. After, of course, would... Nope! Not happening! I'll be right back because absolutely not! I have a long and painful history with this mission. I don't want to have to replay any of it, so now I have Ruin, which deals shock, corrosive, and slag. That's it. That's the big ad. I used my usual strats of making the constructor look in the wrong direction and sitting from a remarkably safe pipe in the distance to deal all of my damage. It was still fairly slow going, all things considered, but as has been the case many a times throughout this run, I am particularly aware that it could have been a lot worse. Like dying to basic mobs immediately after because I'm wearing a level 19 shield and that's not going to change because I just kept finding shields with combat oriented effects. The turrets are incredibly easy to take care of via phase lock, but the badass constructor is at least fairly resistant. I did manage to kill it before it could fire any nukes, but I'll be honest, I just expected it to do more at this stage. I'm not exactly broken up about it, but I am surprised. What I'm not surprised by is that the turrets surrounding the bunker are a non-issue. They took between one and two casts each, and realistically I won't be here long enough for the loaders to prove a challenge either. Reason being, the bunker can be an absolute pain, ask my channel how I know, but this ain't it. What I've found is that range is one of the biggest contributors to difficulty with this fight. Range is not a problem for me right now. Damage is probably the follow-up, and this isn't amazing, but a starter pistol, this is not. How the starter pistol still kills faster than the slowest method on the channel, I still don't know, and of course, following the ongoing pattern for the run, I died to a basic mob immediately after. I ran through rock and stone, brother, because walls are for suckers. Catch a fall? To find a child soldier who I'm here to assassinate. So, everything is horrible here. Also, the game crashed about 30 seconds into this place. At first, I tried playing the game normally. I know, stupid of me in the general sense. Not only can you cheese the section with the door normally, but Maya can phase lock enemies through the field. You can pretty comfortably handle most of the things Angel Core can throw at you, all from the safety of not giving a shit. I had hoped I could destroy the iridium injectors via the AoE on phase lock by just keeping the turrets alive, but no dice. As they often are, they stand alone as an exception that must be made to proceed. The rest was all just variations of hiding behind an invincible door and running out to not do that because I'm impatient and longed to be out of this hell pit. Probably war crimes are exhausting. I'm leaving. What say you, Roland? Ah, he's going back to sleep. What about you, Lil? You're staying here too? Well, fine, but I'm out of here. Well, with her inferiority complex rapidly approaching critical mass and joining up with Jack to pad out her lackluster capabilities, I'm off to Iridium Blight to go to Arid Nexus. Never mind, I'm off to Sawtooth Cauldron. Get your stuff together, guys! I know the leadership got lazy, but you're running me in circles here. What even is there to say about Sawtooth? Too many enemies? Absolutely, I agree. Not enough cover? Yeah. But also, I've got an elevator. It helps even the meekest of builds rise to the occasion. It's no big deal. Gotta break a grounded buzzer that's immune to phase lock? It's not immune to AoEs. Just die several times trying to line up an enemy standing near enough to it to deal some damage and then do it again. It's one of the few things that doesn't heal upon your respawn, so it's absolutely a pain, but it's really not that bad. Afterwards, I killed Mortar just because I could and because I wanted to. I ascended the tower, as one does, and plucked a series of birds out of the sky, and it is merciful to be able to just point and delete these bastards. There are a handful of sections I dread in most of my runs, and this is almost always one of them. In this particular case, though, it was not only palatable, but it was easy. Finally progressing to a new locale, I had to lock up a few pipes before unlocking a new one. You know, running in and dying, running over because nobody looks up, and either the aggro triggers on this spot are broken or I'm a stealth god, and uh... If you've seen the VOD for Dishonored, you, you know which is the case. 
Anyway, I went through a pipe, once again abused the poor aggro triggers that make up this area, not complaining in the slightest, and briefly considered fighting Saturn. Given the damage I was dealing, the desire to do so was about as short-lived as I would have been had I decided to stick around. So I instead booked it, went to deal with the whole map fiasco, and dealt with the exploder that seemed to always load in. The game of course would still have the last laugh as I met with the second exploder. Because why not? By this point, I was doing pretty well. Pretty comfortably steamrolling a lot of things that would typically have me stumbling. Maybe it's just a really warped perception of difficulty by this point, but phase lock genuinely seems good for doing damage. It did fairly well clearing out everything through the claptrap door, and even did a marginally good job at protecting the turrets. In until it didn't, but you know, it, it got close. Ish. I also got around three tubbies and a loot enemy or two in the run, but not a single legendary throughout. You hate to see it. I climbed an unreasonable amount of stairs, given that a basic slope would have not only sufficed, but allowed vehicular access at the grand cost of less effort. I really don't get why these are even here. What followed was me dying to impatience because basic mobs are weirdly hard for me to deal with this run. It's almost like I have no source of healing and my shield is still level 19. When I eventually slowed down a small bit and made it to Brick, things fell into place in the way that things tend to when he's involved. Here he comes, the man, the myth, the legend. And there he goes, off to do amazing work. The only kind of work he does. I mostly sat behind cover, providing a bit of support along the way. I also hold the ability to destroy turrets that are otherwise just obnoxious, which is something I don't get to do often. I do think they managed to short his brain out for a moment though, because the AI in this game only gets buggier every time I play it. Afterwards would come a quick run to the final boss, and... Afterwards would come a quick run to the... Alright, fine, we'll do this the hard way. So I cleared out entirely too many enemies because the game is a dick, and I will blame it exclusively. It is in no way, shape, or form related to decisions that I've made regarding my own survivability. Then came Jack. Guess he found out about the whole theft thing, but it's okay. I'm ready to face him. I... Oh. Jack. Oh, no, Jack. You don't stand a chance. I'd feel bad for killing you, but you died in four phase locks and one wasn't even targeting you. What did you think you were gonna do here? Especially by making yourself immune to being picked up, your ego quickly became your downfall. But it's okay, you have a big old attack beast, right? And it's resistant to a lot of elemental whatnot. But also, it's really stupid. It doesn't know how to reach several different points within the arena, and I've yet to find a run that doesn't make this fight more or less free. Granted, it took something like 37 casts to bring down, but I was in danger for exactly none of them. It's a time investment more than anything. It is so non-threatening that it literally poses a greater risk to my health and safety dead than it ever did alive. But I suppose there's something poetic in that. You never know when something will be the last. There's the first time for everything, but the opposite is true as well. One day, you'll say goodbye to your loved ones for the last time, and you likely won't even know when that is until it's too late. So, love them, goddammit, make it count. Every time, love them like it's your last, because you never know. So, once more with feeling, get phase locked, Jack. And so, yes, I dare say, you can pretty comfortably beat Borderlands 2 with only phase lock. Is pretty fun too, as long as you've got a large capacity for waiting on cooldowns. And if you're watching Gas, I hope this will help so people will stop asking you to give it a try, because yes, many, many of the problems this run faces are level based. In any case though, I hope you enjoyed your time here. You probably know how to use social media, and I hope that means I'll get to hear your thoughts now, and on a future outings. A siren size thanks to my lovely channel members for your continued support. Thank you to Digital Extremes for giving me a paid opportunity to talk about one of my favorite games, and until the next, remember to stay safe, spread some kindness in the world, and I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye. <laughs>